In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, we praise Allah and we thank Him. And we ask Allah for His mercy, for His help and support, and for His guidance. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own selves and from the evil con consequences of our sins. Whomever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whoever decides to go astray, no one can lead back to the straight path except Allah. We bear witness that none is worthy of worship except Allah the Most High, the only creator of the heavens and earth, and that Prophet Muhammad is his final messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be, be upon him. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and upon his household and his companions and followers till the last day. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, O oh, believers, fear Allah, regard him and keep your duty towards him. And do not die except in a state of total submission to Allah. In the last two weeks, we have been discussing the chapter of Joseph, which talks about basically the story of the prophet Joseph. And we were trying to go verse by verse and extract lessons, but obviously this will take such a long time to complete. So I will try to skim over certain verses and mention some lessons that we could extract from them. We see from the story of Joseph, which we all know, that he started his life in the comfort, warmth, and love that he found in the house of his parents. But then certain incidents happened that led to him being thrown in the well. And that was because of the envy of his half-brothers. They initially plotted to kill him, but then one of them felt that this was an extreme measure. And he suggested that they should cast him away. And that's what they did. He was thrown in the well, and then travelers through the desert who were searching for water sent the bucket down the well and they managed to, basically he managed to cling to the bucket and he came out. So we see that for the most simple of reasons, God saved them from death basically in the bottom of this well. And we also remember from the verses that talked about how he felt when he was thrown in the well. Because God says here that when they wanted to throw him in the well, God inspired him. And we read in verse 15 of this chapter, chapter 12, Allah says, So when they took him away, and they all agreed to throw him down to the bottom of the well, they did so, and we revealed to him. Allah revealed to him. What did Allah reveal to him? It says, this is basically what was revealed to him. Indeed, you shall one day inform them of their affair when they know not. So this is a comforting feeling and belief that Allah instilled in the heart of Joseph as he was being thrown in the well, which shows that Allah was with him at even the darkest of moments when he is being thrown in the well, he gets this feeling, this comforting feeling inside his heart that consoles him and takes his fear and anxiety away. And we know that Allah does this with people who are firm believers, who are whom, whom he befriends because of their actions and deeds in this life, the good deeds that they perform in this life, that then when they pass through difficult circumstances, Allah comforts their hearts and give them, gives them steadfastness, tranquility, and serenity. This is basically how he felt. It doesn't talk about him, about his fear, but talks about this comfort, comforting feeling that and understanding that came to his mind, heart, and soul. Also, Allah brings him out of this dire situation, which is a situation that leads to an inevitable death. Allah brings him out because of this feeling of thirst that the travelers, travelers felt, which teaches us that when Allah wants to accomplish something, he will accomplish it with, through a chain of events that you, may not, that you may not expect. 
him being in the bottom of a well, in the middle of a desert, in the middle of a night, who could imagine that he would ever come out from this situation? But it did happen because of those travelers feeling the thirst of the desert and, want, and searching for, for water. And then Allah chooses for him not to suffer during his childhood years by having him being adopted by a very wealthy and rich man from Egypt who took him in and this is what he said to his wife because those people, those travelers took him basically as a merchandise, as a slave and they sold him as a slave but Allah chose for him Allah chose a, a, a condition of honor and comfort for him again by this man, this wealthy man who bought him. It says in verse 21, And he, i.e. the man from Egypt, who bought him, said to his wife, Make his stay comfortable. Maybe he will benefit us, or we shall adopt him as a son. So he raised him as, as his son, as he would raise his son. This is why Allah says after this, Thus did we establish Joseph in the land, and we might teach him, the interpretation of events. Interpretation of events here means those visions that he was able to interpret. When somebody has a vision or a dream that foretells something that will happen in the future, God gave him the gift and understanding to be able to interpret those visions. And that he, that we might teach him, that we may teach him the interpretation of events. Then Allah says, and Allah has full power and control over his affairs, but most of mankind do not know. So the siblings thought that they have gotten rid of him and that he will perish or die or whatever and that this was the end for Joseph. But Allah had in his plan something totally different through unexpected means. So he is raised in this household until he becomes a man and then he's exposed to this huge trial where the lady of the house tries to seduce him so that he would commit fornication with her in the absence like, of her husband. So when the husband went away one day and she had feelings for Joseph, she locked the doors as mentioned in those verses and she offered herself to him. We see that Joseph, the first thing that he said when she made that advancement to him, he said, as we read in the verses, Allah, which means, I will read the verse to you, verse 23. And she in whose house he was, and she in whose house she, he was, sought to seduce him, to do an evil act. And she closed the doors and said, come on, O you. He said, I seek refuge in Allah, or may Allah forbid. Truly, you, truly, your husband is my master. He made my living in a great comfort, so I will never betray him. Verily, the wrongdoers will never be successful. Number one thing that he reached for was the help of his creator. So he says he sought refuge with Allah. He sought Allah's help to overcome his own weakness. Because in this situation, if he had weakened, then nothing would have stopped this evil act to happen. And he also remembered how grateful her husband was to him. He raised him as his child. He cannot betray him. And this is the noble character of Joseph that everyone should try to adopt. That you never forget the favors of those people who were nice and kind to you. So because of that, he he sought to preserve the rights of God, and he also sought to preserve the rights of human beings, especially this man who raised him. While his own wife didn't care about her husband, although her husband must have done much more for her than he has done for Joseph, but still, he had this noble character. And also, one more thing. Allah says that he saved him from falling into this pit of sin, also, not only because he sought refuge with Allah, 
but also because he was a good and sincere person when it comes to his relationship with God. Look at the second verse. And it says in verse 24, And indeed, she did desire him, and he would have inclined to her desire had he not seen the evidence of his Lord. Thus it was that we might turn away, turn him away from evil and illegal sexual intercourse. Surely he was one of our chosen sincere servants. We see here that two things. He saw the evidence of his Lord. The evidence of the Lord basically means all those signs within us and around us in everything that God created that point to the Creator and point to His mercy, to His power, to His wisdom, to His presence. So He sees all this around Him. He knows God is there. He cannot, you cannot commit any act of evil that God would not see. He sees from the evidence around Him and within Him that God is in full control of everything. Whatever actions we do, He is seeing and watching. And He has the power to pay back anyone for any evil deeds that are committed. So he saw that. And also God said about him here that he was from the faithful servants as well. Ibadina means he worshipped Allah. He was a servant of Allah. He kept his duty towards Allah. And mukhlisin, sincere, chosen. Mukhlisin, mukhlasin, both are correct, which means he is sincere, and because of his sincerity, and because of his worship and dedication and servitude to Allah, he was chosen. This gives us a guide as to how to save ourselves from in any evil desires that we may be exposed to. We should always strengthen our faith in our Creator, and His presence, and His wisdom, and His existence, and His power, and His knowledge, and His mercy through looking at His signs. We should serve Allah and worship Him with sincerity at times of ease so that He be with us at times of hardship. And this is what the Prophet said in his famous saying. He says, which means preserve the rights of Allah. Allah will preserve you. In another narration or in the continuation of this prophetic saying, he says, Get to know Allah at times of ease. He will know you at times of hardship. And this is exactly, and, and this is a hardship. The hardship doesn't always mean lack of money or lack of food. Hardship could be a hardship afflicting your faith in God. Could be a crisis of your faith. This is how you would be saved. And you seek refuge with Allah during those times of hardship as we can learn from this chapter. The second, next point, and I'm just skimming quickly through these verses that we're now at verse 39, where it talks about him because he refused to comply with what she wanted from him. So she had him thrown in the jail. And in the jail, you see, what did Yusuf, what did Joseph do in the jail? He kept his same character. He didn't switch or didn't change. He was a noble and rightful and upright person, righteous and upright person, while he was out at times of ease, and he remained a righteous and upright person in the jail. When his, when his mates in the jail, his, his fellow uh, inmates in the jail came to him, and they saw a vision, each one of them saw a different vision. So they came to him and they felt that he was a different person. He was such of a noble character, they sought his help to interpret those visions. It says here in verse 36, And there entered with him two young men in the prison. One of them said, Verily, I saw myself in a dream, pressing wine. The other said, Verily, I saw myself in a dream, carrying bread on my head, and birds were eating thereof. They said to him, Inform us of the interpretation of this. Verily, we think you are one of the doers of good. So they felt that he is a doer of good, and he, they knew, and we know that, the people who do good 
God gives them insight into different things in life. So they felt that he was more qualified to tell them of their own dreams than they could interpret their own dreams for themselves. Anyhow, he said he will do what, uh, his best to interpret the dreams. But then, before that, he was calling them to the, to, to the truth. He started giving them advice on how to live their, live their lives. He said, and, and he gave an example of himself. He says, and I have followed the religion of my fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And never could we attribute any partners whosoever to Allah. This is from the grace of Allah to us and to mankind. Mean, meaning the religion of monotheism is the favor of Allah to us and to mankind. The best favor and grace that Allah has bestowed upon humanity is that he has sent them messengers to teach them about their create, their one creator and to guide them on as to how to, to establish communication and worship with this creator. This is the greatest grace and blessing, a grace and blessing of Allah to us and mankind, but most men do not, are not grateful to Allah for this blessing. How are most men not grateful? By, by not embracing this faith of monotheism and connection and servitude with Allah and servitude to him. We'll continue in the second part of this talk. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, we praise Allah and we thank him. We ask Allah for his mercy, for his guidance, for his provision, help and support and protection. And we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own selves and from our sinful actions. Whoever Allah guides, no one can misguide and whoever goes astray, no one can lead back to the straight path except Allah. We bear witness that none is worthy of worship except Allah and that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final messenger. Allah the Most High says in the Quran, O believers, fear Allah, regard him and keep your duty towards him and say what is right. He will rectify your deeds for you and he will forgive your sins and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed achieved a great success. So he keeps on giving them advice and guiding them back to their Lord before even interpreting the vision for them. And he says, he goes on saying, O oh my companions in the prison, are many different gods better or the one creator? So they were obvious, obviously they were engaged in polytheism and he wanted to guide them back to monotheism. And then he says to them that those gods that you are worshiping are only false gods that cannot help you, have not created anything, will not create anything. He says to them, you do not worship besides Allah, besides the one creator, but only names, names without a reality. You give them those titles. You have invented them in your hearts and you have given them imaginary powers and titles that they do not even own or deserve. And those, some of those gods that people worship do not even exist. He says, you do not worship besides him, but only names which you have named and forged you and your fathers for which Allah has sent down no authority, which means there's no evidence. If you worship something, you have to have evidence that this something that you are worshiping has the qualities of the creator, of, of your true Lord. If it doesn't, then it doesn't deserve to be worshiped. Simple as that, as that. He says, and then he says, the command or judgment is only for Allah. He has commanded that you worship none but him. That is the true straight religion, but most men do not know. He mentioned earlier that most men are not grateful towards the blessing of prophethood and messages coming from the Creator. And here he mentioned that most men, most mankind do not embrace monotheism. And this is the reality even up to, up to today. Then he goes on to advise them and then he interprets the vision for them. And then the king sees this vision that we all know and he seeks an interpreter for this vision and none of his party is able to interpret the vision for him. So these, one of those two men who were with Joseph in jail had gone out and he was now serving the king. And that is why he suggested for the king that yes, I know a man who is able to interpret those visions and he's in jail. 
Because of this vision, the king sends for Joseph to come out from the jail to basically be his interpreter for visions and basically to be one of his consultants. So he goes out from the position, he comes out from the position of being incarcerated in jail and deprived, deprived from all the enjoyment of life to being uh, in, the, in the company and consort of the, of the king. So we see here that when Allah decided and wanted for Joseph's situation to change, the cause of this change was a, such a simple and subtle event, which is a dream that the king saw while sleeping. This shows us that Allah, when he wants something to happen, the chain of events that lead for that thing to happen could be very subtle and could be very distant from that final outcome. But Allah can lead from this subtle and very humble beginning or very humble event and very trivial event to a big change in the life of Joseph. This dream leads to Joseph coming out from jail and being very close to the king and then being appointed as a treasurer for Egypt. And of course, at that time, Egypt had a good uh, uh, farming system and basically was supplying grains and crops for not only for Egypt, but also for the surrounding lands. And that's why people used to come to Egypt to get some supplies. I will conclude by showing that this chapter shows us that life could be very unstable. This boy initially was taken from being raised by his parents and from the love of his parents to a situation where he could have died being thrown in the bottom of the well. Then Allah saves him from that situation and places him in a house of comfort again and, and prosperity until he's grown up. Then he goes from that situation to a situation where he's imprisoned, imprisoned, uh, imprisoned and deprived again. And then he goes from that situation to the situation where he becomes a treasurer over Egypt and very close to the king and for his vision to be fulfilled. This shows us that life can be changing. And if we fall into a difficult situation, it is not the end. It, could not, it does not have to be the end. Allah can change things in the blink of an eye. And you can see the change can be brought about by Allah for, with the simplest of means, such as a vision that the, that the king saw or something else as, uh, similar to that. I mention another example from the Quran that shows us that Allah, when he wants to bring about change, he will bring it about with the simplest of means. I will recite just a couple of verses from the beginning of chapter 28, the chapter of, it's called the chapter of Al-Qasas, the narrations or the stories. In this chapter, let me read for you. Allah talks about Pharaoh and how, how, how much he was a tyrant and a vicious uh, wrongdoer and uh, the, how much he spread corruption, mischief on earth. Allah says in verse number three, we recite to you, O Muhammad, some of the news of Moses and the Pharaoh in truth, which means these are the real events that Allah is inspiring and revealing to the Prophet Muhammad. For a people who believe, believers know that this Quran is from God, from the Creator, and that Prophet Muhammad did not plagiarize from any previous book. This is a direct revelation in truth from the Creator. Allah says, for people who believe, i.e. in this Quran and in the oneness of Allah. Then in, uh, in verse number four, he says, verily Pharaoh exalted himself. He elevated himself above the people. He exalted himself in the land and made its people different sects. He divided the people because that's what tyrants do. They divide the people to be able to rule them. And he divided the people into sects, oppressing some groups among them, especially the Israelites were oppressed and kill, killing their sons and letting their uh, uh, female or their daughters live. Verily he was of those who commit great sins and crimes, oppression and, uh, 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 oppression and mischief. Then Allah talks about his plan to change this situation. He says, and we wished, I mean God, the creator, wished to do a favor to those who were weak and oppressed in the land and to make them the rulers and to make them the inheritors of the land. To turn the, everything, to turn the balance upside down on the Pharaoh. So how does Allah accomplish this? 
We read in the following verse how Allah will accomplish that. And this, the beginning of this change is mentioned in the following verse. I will read this, this to you. He says, And we inspired the mother of Moses, telling her, Feed your baby, means breastfeed your baby. And when you fear for him, then cast him into the river, and fear not, nor grieve. Verily we shall bring him back to you, and we shall make him one of our messengers. So, when Allah wants to make this, bring about this huge change in balance of powers in Egypt or on the, in the land in general, the beginning was this newborn baby who is being breastfed by his mother. And that was the beginning, or that was the seed that led to this change, this huge, magnificent change that happened in the, in the course of history. We will stop here and we will.